Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. As I said, today we're doing something different. Today I've hacked together a blacksmith forge out of a bathroom sink, mostly because I had a couple laying around. And they're nice and deep in their cast, so they give me a good fire bolt. Uh, the rest is just plumbing and a blower and a, a dimmer uh, switch that I hooked to the blower. So let me show you what we got going here. Well, here's how I made my uh, small blacksmith forge out of a bathroom sink. Uh, the bathroom sink itself is cast. You can see the rust there. Um, actually pretty heavy construction and I got a couple laying around if you're in South Jersey you're welcome to on. What's inside here is this was a refractory cement that I actually got from a sand and cement place by the bag and it worked okay but it crumbled and what I did was I just redid the bowl using a refractory cement that I got from Home Depot. This stuff. So and it squeegees right on, it looks wet but it's actually dry. In the bottom here we've got, I can never pronounce this, it's a cheer. cheer. It's the, uh, the vent when I'm going to show you where the air comes from. I had made one myself. It tended to get clogged so in this case I actually splurged and I bought one. It wasn't very many dollars from Centaur Forge online. So as with any forge, one of the main components is that there's an air supply. And so this is a blower motor. I built a little uh, matching gasket here, flange. And I used regular old plumbing to hook it into the bottom of the sink. Here I've got a nut I can remove and, and let the waste drop out of the bottom. So a little bit of a wastegate there. So I didn't mention it, but this is called the fire bowl. Now I did have a guy who uh, actually from eBay I bought a, a, a vice, a blacksmith vice from. And he looked at this and he said this was not bad because of the depth. If you look, there's a lot of cheap fire bowls you can get, or small forges, but they're not very deep. The portable ones, they look almost like barbecue grills. Uh, so you do need some depth to get your coal going. This here is blacksmithing coal. Uh, I just bought this online. I used, got my last batch from an actual blacksmith in Delaware. Uh, this is a little larger than I, I had last time, but uh, what it is is a low sulfur coal. And a 50 pound bag with free shipping, it wasn't too bad. So I, I'm now getting my uh, blacksmithing coal online. We've got ever present water, and I also have a fire extinguisher, but the water is for controlling the fire. Now you don't need one of these to get started, uh, but I do have one, and this is my blacksmith anvil. You can get anvils from a lot of places, but uh, there's something called an ASO, an anvil shaped object. And what that is, is an anvil, it, it's a piece of metal shaped like an anvil, but it is not hardened steel. It is cast steel, and most of them come from uh, Asia and overseas. You can actually probably get started with one of those. Um, I certainly know, I, I, if I didn't have this, I would go ahead and use one. All right, just to show you the blower going here, you can probably hear that, but you can see the amount of uh, air being forced into uh, into the bottom of this bowl and this is just a lamp dimmer I put into a weatherproof housing. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill this here with coal and I'm going to attempt to get a fire started. Uh, not as easy as it sounds with coal sometimes. So uh, hopefully I'll join you after I got a little bit of a fire going here. And uh, let's heat some metal, make sure that this uh, thing uh, actually does uh, act like a forge. So I moved my forge outside for the first fire of the season here, just didn't want any unexpected surprises. Plus I am working on a fume hood for inside the, the building here. There's a little bit of yellowish green or whitish green smoke just starting here. That means the coal's finally starting to catch. Um, and it's due to the blower here uh, providing the oxygen. Now one thing I will say that a lot of people do these, I've, I've heard of them being done in a, a Radar dishes or you know satellite dishes, uh, old old charcoal grills, that kind of thing. Uh, you can use a hair dryer for the blower uh, or a shop vac in, in in exhaust mode. So I just happen to went with a scroll cage motor and and we'll see how it works. I haven't used this one before. So our fire is starting to finally catch here and uh, uh, let's see if we can start heating some metal. Okay, we're coming up to temperature here. If I was doing a full burn today. Uh, I'd be adding more coal to this and making a bank around it, which uh, is called a bank fire. And it allows, see how there's smoke coming out of the coal that's getting warm, it's getting ready to fire. 
um, and, and so you're ready to constantly feed in. I do have a water can and a jug of water where you sprinkle water on the outside edges then to control how big your fire gets and, and the size of it. You get two byproducts from this. You get coke, uh, which is a concentrated form of carbon, which is very useful with, with doing this, uh, and you get clinkers, which kind of look like coke, but they're the byproduct, the waste, and uh, they, they make a metallic sound when they hit stuff, which is why they call them clinkers. And you have to you use tools like these to pull the clinkers out and out of your way or your fire will slowly suffocate. So coming up at the temperature here and uh, we're going to shove some metal in in a second. Okay, so I'm going to twist this piece of steel because it's up to the temperature where I can do things like that at. Now you can use a vice grip. I happen to have a little bar here with slots cut out of it. And you see I can twist 5 8 inch square stock. and even get it over to the anvil and square it up in time. So here we have our piece of twisted stock uh, just showing that we really can get this uh, forge up to temperature here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it out. I'm going to uh, take the air out of it and I'm going to cool it off with water. Now, this here is just a can with some holes punched in the bottom and it's, it's a sprinkler can. It's kind of old, but you get the idea. It's easy to make the kind of tools you need for this. All right, so you thought you all had a peanut gallery while you're filming. This is what I had to contend with. The only people not in here today are the peafowl. So here's a here's a little ornamental. <laughs> that's why I'm wearing a welding glove. Here's a nice little ornamental curve. As you can tell, it's still hot. I'm about to dunk it in water. Um, at that temperature, I can pound that into a, a you know a, a point, a knife blade, a, a door knocker, a door handle, uh, a, a Raspberry Pi case, just any number of things. So uh, why do this? Why show you blacksmithing? Well, it's a hobby of mine. When, when, my, when I need uh, something to take my mind off all that other electronic stuff, I like banging hot metal. And, and uh, Unlike wood, if you don't like it, you move it where you need it again. If it's too short, you make it longer. Let's see you do that with wood. And uh, who knows, maybe we can start a trend for raspberry pie cases forged out of uh, high carbon steel or something. So. Uh, there's there's a lot you can learn here. I'm not going to try and tell you about the high carbon steels. You know, I, I keep I keep uh, 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 springs from cars and stuff as a source for, for those. Uh, but there's just a wealth of stuff online. But my thing is, if you think you'd like this, try it. it you know, there's gas forges. Uh, there's you know, I made one out of a uh, out of a sink here. And you can use start out with a regular hammer and something hard to bang on and, and see if you like it. Uh, you, any number of places you can get steel, uh, start with scrap steel, don't spend any money if you can help it. So Bill heard from Hackaday, uh, just taking a break from normal stuff, thought I'd uh, mangle some metal and uh, we'll be back on normal stuff next time. So Bill Hurd, have a good one.